up everybody and welcome back to Walt Knots for another day here at the Yarn Dungeon. Today we have a Tunisian Tuesday. I have a project here that is almost completely done. I just have a little bit of embellishments that I need to put on it. I think the border? A little bit more than I thought was left. The reason that it's taking me so long to get this done is it's a project that I had set aside for the end of the night or honestly whenever I was feeling up to it I would just kind of pull it out. So it was really good for winding down for the day. This project was too big to fit into a tote so I have like a bucket that it's in right now. Normally this has multiple projects in it but as you can see this one is giant. So it is a throw blanket which ended up being a lot bigger than a throw I think anyways. See if I can pull it out without completely unraveling it. Like I said I do have a little bit that I need to finish today. Perfect. Okay I have the edge. Let's set that aside. This one uses the honeycomb stitch which is really cool when it comes to building texture really quickly and repetitively without having to go back, look at the paper, remember where you're at. Like it's very easy to memorize, but it looks super complex and really pretty. The pattern came from this fantastic book, which is the Tunisian Crochet Handbook, A Beginner's Guide by Tony Lipsy. And I could literally rant and rave about this book all night. And I already have. I have an entire video talking just about this book, the ins and outs, and why I feel like even if you're remotely interested in Tunisian crochet, you totally need this. And if you're already like working up patterns with Tunisian crochet, you need this in your life. You really do. Just trust me. It's fantastic. Obviously, I have a lot of things marked from either I've already done them or I want to do them. But this particular pattern was called the Hudson and tassel throw. So this is the picture of what it looks like. It's gorgeous, right? You just want to like wrap yourself up in it, get cozy, watch a horror movie. I'm very happy with it. It ended up being way bigger than I thought. I'm like trying not to let go of this either because like I said, I have to finish the edge here. So I'm going to stop messing with it. The yarn that I used is impeccable yarn and it is honestly one of my favorites to use for blankets because it's just really easy to take care of. Throw it in the wash, throw it in the dryer. It doesn't matter. It's going to hold up. I chose this color, which I think is called citron. I have some over here. Let me grab it. Yeah, citron. Only for the fact that I had a ton of it. Easily over 20 skeins of this. I knew that I wasn't going to run out and it was just like a, a fun project to do. Then I realized that I had a bunch of this yarn as well from Impeccables, which is like grape or something. Yeah, it is. Grape punch. And if you put them together, you get total Beetlejuice vibes from this, which meant that this now had to be my Beetlejuice throw. And the fact that it uses a honeycomb stitch, I thought it would be kind of fun to do little Armagurumi bees and use that on the border. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do a bee for every single tassel or if I'm going to do every other or maybe just like one on the end or like each corner. I just need to finish up the border first, which says to use a really light slip stitch. And I'm totally okay with that because that means it's going to be quick, easy, power all the way through it because it is big. Like this is a much bigger throw than I thought it was going to be. This is my favorite random purchase that I've made. It is to hold my iPad like that. I can pull up shutter and have my horror movies going because I don't have a TV or anything in the yarn dungeon, but I like having movies going. So normally I just have it going on my phone. Honestly, it was just suggested to me in my Amazon cart. So I thought, why not? Let's give it a try. It seems like it would work and be awesome. Spoiler alert, it is freaking awesome. And I always have my iPad out anyways because I'm using that for my patterns. So I don't know why I did didn't think about using my iPad in the first place. It's just a really simple gadget that I love quite a bit now. I'm not entirely sure how much I have left to go. I think I've done two sides or this. Yeah, it's got to be two. Ooh, I might need to grab another skein here. I'm actually going to take this off too. You could really just as easily grab an eight millimeter crochet hook and go all the way around it. It's just, I already have this out. This does annoy me when I'm not actually using it. It's just like, I don't like it bumping me. should have picked out what I wanted to watch first. 
It's Summerween, so I need some sort of summery horror. I've looked at this movie, The Seed, which is a Shudder original, a couple of times, and it looks super campy horror. Either people really, really loved it or they absolutely hated it. I'm gonna do it anyways. I had plenty left. Didn't even come close to needing to go grid another one. Quick and easy border and it cleans everything up. Now I'm gonna attach the tassels onto the shorter sides. 12 tassels are supposed to go across this. I don't know if I actually wanna make 12 beetle bees. <laughs> Maybe we'll start with half and then see how I feel after that. I can always add on as I go. I made all 12 of these tassels. They look fantastic. I did exactly what it said in the book and I didn't even, like I have a tassel maker, but I almost kind of prefer doing it this way better. It just is a lot easier. But then I decided that I don't want the tassels to be the same color as the blanket. Why? Because I'm difficult and why would I do anything the easy way? So I have all 12 of these. I'm gonna save them. Maybe I'll use them for a different project, but I want them to be black especially since it's Beetlejuice themed colors, the blanket will be this color, the tassels will be black, the beetle bees will be white and purple, and there we go. That's the color combo. I don't know why I didn't think about it before I did these, but here we go, take two of making all these freaking tassels. <laughs> Now I've just run out of yarn from the skein that I decided to use. I have eight tassels and this is impeccable yarn and every single batch is a little bit different. It's the same color, but the shading is just a little bit off. So I grabbed a different one, this one right here. The shade is a little bit different. Is it dramatically different? No, in no way, shape or form, but is it gonna bother me? Yes. 100% it's going to bother me. So I have eight tassels and I think that's where I'm gonna stop. I'm just gonna do four on each side instead of six on each side, which is kind of okay because it means that I need to make less bees. We're seeing the silver lining. I guess that's what we're gonna have to do, yeah. The bee pattern is from Not Bad. It's actually the zombie that they have on that page, which is why I was drawn to it, even though I'm making it into a Beetlejuice version. I actually have one done. It doesn't have wings on, but that's what it's gonna look like. And I don't think I'm gonna put any eyeballs. I don't know, I might change my mind. I just wanna go as easy as possible because I wanna get this blanket done tonight and I have just like a few hours left. I'm gonna try to feed a piece of this yarn through the center of it. So that way when I pull this out, I'll make a knot on the bottom and then it hangs like this with the tassel. First, I was gonna actually just attach these onto the blanket. So just in the corners or like attach it where the tassel was. So kind of like this, but I don't really like that. That way they swing too and it looks more like how a bee would actually be. <laughs> Did not mean to do that. More like it was swinging instead of just stationary and attached to the blanket. I have a couple of ends to weave in on the actual blanket. Only two, okay, that's actually not that bad. I thought it was gonna be way worse than that. I'm actually gonna place everything out first just to see if I like where everything's at. It would have been so great if I would have waited to put lotion on because it is impossible to get this metal needle through any bit of this yarn. I just have like no leverage at all.
It took a long time to get here, but finally the beetle bee throw is done and I'm so happy with it. Very glad with my decision to make the bees hang. Like that just gives me so much joy. This is also gonna be an incredibly warm throw. If you've tried impeccable yarn, you know what I'm talking about? It's just that thick, chunky acrylic yarn that seems to get warmer the longer you have it on you. Perfect for summerween at night times. And I finished it literally just in time. We have a couple of weeks left. Everything in the yarn dungeon is eventually just gonna be Beetlejuice colors. It's just, it's happening naturally. That's the yarn that I'm drawn to. Not mad about it. All right, ghouls, that is it for today. So thank you for hanging out with me, making this awesome throw that I'm not gonna wanna put away after Summerween ends. I'm probably gonna have to have a permanent section in the yarn dungeon that has all my Beetlejuice inspired crochet creations. Yeah, that might have to happen. Again, the pattern and the book that this came from is linked down below. Please check it out if you have not yet, especially if you are brand new to Tunisian crochet. This is a absolute must have in my opinion. It is fantastic. It's gonna make your journey into Tunisian crochet so much easier and just so incredibly enjoyable. Obviously, I had a super fun time creating this and I'm gonna be doing more. I plan on fully working all the way through this entire book so if you also want to see some of the patterns that I'll be working up in the near future snag the book and shout out down below which one you think I should do next. But for today that is it so have a fantastically spooky rest of your day and I will see you in my next video.